And we're just gonna keep on going with agriculture, y'all. And in this video, we're gonna learn the backstory. Where did agriculture come from and how did it spread? And that means it's time to get cozy with the agricultural revolution. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, Let's get to it. Okay, as is our custom, let's begin by defining our terms. The agricultural revolution describes the transition from hunting and gathering societies to sedentary agricultural societies around 10,000 BCE. And wouldn't you know it, the definition, which is supposed to help you understand the meaning of the word, also has lots of confusing words. So let's go a little further. Oh, and by the way, if you want no guys to follow along with this video and all my videos, then check the link in the description. Anyway, when I say hunting and gathering societies, that means that most of Earth's population was made up of small bands of people mainly tied together by kinship ties. Now, often they were migratory and got most of their food by gathering fruits and berries from plants or by hunting animals for their sweet meats. But at some point, somebody figured out something revolutionary, namely that you didn't have to keep moving from place to place in order to harvest food grown in the wild. Instead, you could just stay in one place, which is to say become sedentary and plant food in the ground on purpose. Moreover, you could take wild animals and bring them under your care and use them for work and, you know, to eat. So the planting of seeds and the taming of wild animals is what we call domestication. So put it all together and here's what you get. The first agricultural revolution occurred when human beings stopped chasing their food around large patches of territory and instead settled their hind parts in one place and grew food on purpose. And just in case it isn't fully dawning on you, this is arguably the most important and far reaching turning point in all of history. The only potential rival being the industrial revolution, but we'll get to that in unit seven. Like nobody knew how to farm and then somebody, you know, actually a lot of somebody's figured out how to farm. And that led to the development of civilization and writing systems and legal codes, and nothing we have today would have been possible without it. Not Doritos, not democracy, and certainly not bald bearded gap toothed man helping you study AP human geography on the internet. Okay, so you know what the agricultural revolution was, but you also need to know where it began, and I'm gonna tell you about four different places. And to be clear, the domestication of plants and animals occurred in more places than these four, but these are the four you absolutely need to know. And we refer to these birthplaces of agriculture as hearths, which, if you'll remember back to unit three, describes the cultural and geographical centers in which new practices and cultural traits develop and from which those practices and traits spread elsewhere. Okay, so here you can see the four main hearths of agriculture. One in the Fertile Crescent, one over here in the Indus River Valley, one over here in Southeast Asia, and finally one over here in Central America. Now you're going to need to be somewhat familiar with the various kinds of domestication practiced in each of these hearths, but first just take a second and look at this map again. These are the locations all over the world in which people figured out how to farm in order to feed themselves, and these people do not have contact with each other. So the thing to remember here is that all these various places developed agricultural practices more or less independently. Why are you not falling out of your chair in amazement right now? Like farming is not an obvious way to feed people and feeding people turns out to be a pretty part of, you know, existing. And yet in all these places across the world at more or less the same time, they abandoned their simple and traditional methods of feeding themselves and they developed much more complicated and intensive methods it's insane. Anyway, let's visit each of these locations real quick and just get a little cozier with them. First, here in Southwest Asia, we have the Fertile Crescent, which was the OG hearth of agriculture. And because they lived around the fertile soil between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, they figured out how to plant wheat and barley, for example, and domesticated animals like cattle and sheep. And the second, over here in South Asia, we have the Indus River Valley, which, just like the Fertile Crescent, was home to a metric buttload of water and fertile soil. So here they figured out how to domesticate plants like wheat and barley and peas, and then animals like cattle and buffalo. And then third, over in Southeast Asia, they figured out how to domesticate plants like sugarcane and root vegetables and animals like pigs. And then finally, checking in way over from the Western Hemisphere is the development of agriculture in Central America. And they were able to domesticate plants like sweet potatoes and beans and maize and animals like the turkey. Now to be clear, we're talking about a transition that happened over the course of centuries and millennia. But even so, wherever this change occurred, it created the conditions for populations to grow and civilizations to develop. So maybe it's less domestication and more like womestication. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, even though these hearths of agriculture grew up independent of one another, eventually the plants and animals they domesticated began to spread to other places. So how did they spread and what patterns of diffusion characterized their spread? <laughs> what a good question and I'm in the mood to answer. Now after the first hearths of agriculture were established, that enabled people in those places to settle down into a sedentary lifestyle, which led to the rise of city-states and major civilizations. And at that time, major civilizations began to interact more through trade and as merchants carried goods for sale to new places, they also spread agricultural techniques 
and crops. And if you reach all the way back into the brain folds you developed in Unit 3, then you'll remember what that is called. Expansion diffusion? <laughs> Dang straight. But anyway, the most dramatic example of agricultural diffusion occurred in the process that came to be known as the Columbian Exchange that occurred in the 15th and 16th centuries. Now, by definition, this refers to the exchange of plants, animals, diseases, and people between the Americas, Europe, and Africa. You see, right around this time, Europeans were getting their big boy imperial exploration pants on and were sailing all over the dang world trying to trade and assert their power. And eventually, a couple Western European states began sailing west across the Atlantic, thinking they'd find a route to Asian trade markets that way. But they ended up running into two giant honking continents that no one in Europe had previously known about. Now, there are all kinds of stories to tell about the causes and consequences of that old world and new world meeting. But for our purposes, you just need to understand that this development created the occasion for a massive diffusion of plants and animals across the globe. For example, maize and potatoes were introduced to Europe from the Americas and had major consequences. Because they're both rich in nutrients, they made Europeans healthier by varying their diet, and that led to longer lifespans and thus population explosion. But the transfer went the other way too. For example, wheat and various cereal crops were introduced to the Americas from Europe, which likewise improved nutrition among the indigenous peoples of the Americas. Additionally, Europeans brought horses to the Americas, which transformed the lives of some indigenous communities. Not only could the horse be used for agriculture, but for the people living on the plains who hunted buffalo for survival, they gained an enormous advantage. So the Columbian Exchange was arguably the most significant diffusion of agriculture in world history. But agriculture continued to diffuse after that and still spreads today. Now later, the Industrial Revolution would create new advances in transportation technologies like railroads and refrigeration that enabled food to be exported to distant locations while also remaining fresh. And there are other moments of significant agricultural diffusion. Like what we just talked about in this video was the first agricultural revolution. There's also a second and a third, but we'll keep it clean and give them their own video. All right, click here to keep reviewing for Unit 5 and click here to grab my video note cards, which are going to help you get all the contents of this course firmly crammed into your brain folds. And I'll catch you on the flip-flop. Heimler out.